Hello, good evening. Thank you for staying on for this long. And um, I just want to say thank you so much to Haku and Felix for such amazing talks. And it's really hard to follow up from what both of them have done with uh, what is going to be a very non-technical talk and perhaps um, a lot of me speaking at you rather than giving any uh, demonstrations. So I wanted to do a talk about MATLAB because um, among computer scientists and among sort of the software engineering community um, and such, MATLAB has a lot of shade on its name. I, I, I'd say it's pretty, pretty disrespected. Um, a lot of people don't seem to like it. And there's a reason for that, um, which I completely understand speaking both as uh, a computer scientist and an engineer. Um, so I completely understand um, where it falls short. But I think this evening I wanted to to perhaps explain why it is the way it is and um, sort of some of the design decisions that went into it and why it's not all complete garbage. Um, so just a brief overview. I'm not going to um, try and convert you into MATLAB. That's not my aim. I'm also not paid by MathWorks, which is the company that um, runs MATLAB. I hate MATLAB sometimes, um, and I, I, I always need to look up how to do things. Um, so don't please please don't feel like you're being evangelized at uh, this is not what this is about um i'm also not going to um discuss the market around matlab um and why um some other tools might be better than others um i just don't know enough about that um and i'm definitely not going to try and um tell you that matlab is a great uh tool to teach people programming um because for the reasons i'll get into it obviously isn't um, so, I'm sure a lot of you already know, but uh, MATLAB is bad uh, because it's missing quite a lot of key features um, from other programming languages. Uh, some people might, might not even call MATLAB a programming language. Um, so, one of the main things it's missing is actually um, a, a type system, believe it or not. Uh, in MATLAB, everything's in arrays, which, I mean, I guess you could call that a type system, but like... Um, Strings are arrays, as in most other languages. Um, but if you want to make structures or any advanced data types, you have to do arrays of arrays. So it's just nesting all the way down. Um, another reason why it sucks is because it's closed source. Um, MathWorks uh, have sold MATLAB as a product. You can't, uh, you know, you can't just open um, a file, write some MATLAB code, and then use a command line tool to to compile it and run it. Uh, no, you have to buy MATLAB and you have to install it, um, which sucks if you're not in a university. I think uh, a lot of us at Warwick are very spoiled by the fact that um, uh, the university has paid for a campus license. Um, and I think a lot of us will get a nasty shock uh, when we leave Warwick and perhaps uh, the companies that we work for, or if we, um, you know, if we do something else with our lives, um, we won't actually have access to MATLAB, um, which sucks. Completely sucks. If you want, if you want to try something that you've seen uh, in a research paper, you can't do that. You need to have MATLAB. Um, anyway, I'll stop going on about that. Um, another reason is, as I mentioned before, it's not a suitable teaching tool. Um, there's just so many constructs that just don't apply to other programming languages uh, and bad ways of writing code that you wouldn't use anywhere else. Uh, and finally, and this is you know the most memeable aspect of MATLAB um, among computer scientists is that arrays start at one. Um, and Dijkstra, uh, you know, fair, fair play fair play to him. You can, you know, you got, you got to come down hard on people who insist that arrays start at one. Um, and it, it's just such a shame that MATLAB does it. Or, or is it a shame? Because MATLAB isn't really designed for computer scientists at all. Um, it's actually designed for uh, um, mathematicians and engineers. Um, so, for example, the notation for accessing um, arrays or vectors, um, the first element of it is um, with a little subscript 1. It's not a subscript 0, it's a subscript 1. Um, so that's perhaps why in MATLAB, if you want to access the first element of an array or a vector, uh, you just do brackets 1. Um, so perhaps that's a reason... That, so that is the background behind why arrays start at 1. It's not because... Um, everybody wanted to uh, throw the throw the rules to the wind it's actually because um, it makes it follows mathematical conventions um, and that is what MATLAB is good at good for it's good for linear algebra and matrix manipulation and pretty much nothing more 
So MATLAB actually stands for Matrix Laboratory, right? And there's so many inbuilt functions um, that you could just use. You can find the minimum. Um, I'll, I'll go through all of them in turn. You can find the minimum value of an array or vector, um, similarly the max. You can change um, the dimensions using the reshape command. So you take your existing um, you take your existing vector and change and specify the new numbers of rows and columns. Uh, you can find you can get you can extract a column matrix um, using a very simple command. You can um, concatenate two matrices um, using that um, command on line three c equals a b. Um, you can find the eigenvalues, um, which is quite a common uh, application in engineering and mathematics. And you also um, finally, if you had a polynomial, for example. Um, and you want to find the roots of it, uh, you put all the coefficients of the pol polynomial in a, in a vector like that, and all you have to do is do the roots command. MATLAB is not claiming to be all-knowing. Um, it's not a tool for everything. But And this is a wider point I'd like to make. Um, you've got to use the right tools for the job. Sure, you can do all of these commands in something like uh, Python, uh, with NumPy library, for example, uh, or matplotlib when you need to visualize some data. But Ma I'd like to posit that MATLAB is perhaps the best tool for writing simple code, not exactly for computer scientists, but for mathematic mathematicians and engineers who want to prototype something very quickly. And then they might go and write their algorithms in another language later, where they could perhaps parallelize um, and vectorize their code in a better way. It, MATLAB does a very limited set of functions very well. But that doesn't stop people from trying to use it as an all-purpose language. So we have, in MATLAB, uh, pretty common constructs that we see in other languages, right? We've got functions. Um, we've got if, else constructs. We've got looping. Uh, but as you might notice on this slide, uh, the syntax is pretty clumsy. Uh, and you might you might not uh, you know you might not do this um, with other languages. So for example, um, MATLAB doesn't use curly brackets um, to uh, clo close things up. Uh, so that's that's one way. It's 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 a little it's a little awkward to work with. Um, it might surprise you that MATLAB actually supports object oriented programming, which includes everything to do with OOP. Uh, which include that's classes, uh, inheritance, virtual dispatch, packages, uh, pass by value semantics, and pass by reference semantics. Um, and you might think, well, great, I, I can use MATLAB for everything. Uh, th th this could be the language that I learn, uh, and you know, I, I can switch to this forever. But do, we have to ask ourselves: Do we really care about MATLAB as a programming language? Do we do we really need these constructs? Um, and the answer is no. But there's a reason why MATLAB is not just thrown away to the wayside nowadays. Um, there's a reason why it's still around. Um, and that is because money. M money is the reason MATLAB is still here. Um, you know, you could go use your open source tools if you like, um, but they're not, they don't have the backing um, and staying power that MATLAB might have. They don't have a, um, a fully paid team of developers uh, that are working um, to do whatever they want to the language to fix bugs, for example, and you might answer, you might argue, oh, the open source community does something like that, um, which is true. Um, but one of the reasons why MATLAB is so powerful is because um, there's lots of add-ons um, that are just you, you, that for such niche esoteric concepts uh, that you won't find anywhere else. MATLAB has a toolbox for it, um, which is something you can just bring into your um, environment and literally just uh, drag and drop. Um, it's also got live scripts, uh, which is where you can uh, annotate your code with explanations, uh, images, for example, tables, which might seem really, really strange. Um, think of them as basically notebooks, um, for example. Um, and why? And the big point, as I've already mentioned, why MATLAB is still here is because um, academia loves it. Um, there might be a trend of moving away from it now, back to um, you know open source and um, non-proprietary software. Um, but f let me give you an example. Um, for a perpetual individual license, you have to pay MathWorks four hundred and twenty-five pounds. Um, just that is an obscene amount of money um, just to be able to use MATLAB. Now imagine how much money universities are paying to license all possible users on their network. 
multiply that by, you know, tens of hundreds of universities, and you can see why MATLAB is still around and still why it's a very successful product. Um, yeah. it, you won't find a Warwick engineering team that isn't using it. Um, and that's the key point here. People actually like, but I, I, this, this might be a strange concept to people, but like, um, people actually like using MATLAB. Um, and that, there's a re oh, somebody just left because of that, I, I completely um, understand. Um, but uh, MATLAB, MATLAB is very good, as I've mentioned, at using very specific uh, tools. So for example, the ComTraps fact function, um, you know, that's just a built-in. Uh, and you can chain these commands and manipulate things very, very quickly. Um, but that, you know, I've, I've gone on enough about um, why it's so good, etc. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not the best thing in the world. Um, as I mentioned, and this is probably the worst thing. Uh, closed science means that researchers that publish MATLAB code... Um, mean, sorry. Researchers that pub ma publish MATLAB code only result in it being picked up by other people that own MATLAB. Um, which means that you could argue that publishing your scientific results um, in with MATLAB code is probably unethical. Uh, just because you have now paywalled science to a large number of against a large number of people, um, and that and that financial cost is unbearable for some. And MathWorks, who gets all this money, they can do whatever they want with their language, right? They can change um, how a function works, for example, um, and the users would be completely powerless to stop them. That's the main takeaway here. Closed source is a huge problem, um, and I don't see it going away until people move away from MATLAB, academia moves away from MATLAB, uh, universities stop teaching MATLAB. Um, and the the issue with having no formally defined grammar is that um, you just, you just uh, sorry, a lot of things are incompatible um, with previous versions, um, and math, MathWorks can change what it wants. Um, so I hope that's given you a very short overview of MATLAB. Uh, I know I've been speaking really, really quickly and uh, probably sound like very deranged, but I hope you enjoyed and I'll take questions now if you'd like. Yep. Yeah, if anybody wants any help with MATLAB anytime, please message me. Um, I, yeah, I'm just happy to help.